<laughs> I'm with Lee Lu. She is a writer and director of There's a New World Somewhere. Welcome. Oh, hi, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Yeah, really well. It's beautiful here. Yeah, it yeah. really is. So can you tell me a little bit about the film? What is it about? The film is about Sylvia. She's an aspiring artist living in New York City at the time. And she actually has to go back to her hometown of Austin, Texas to attend her friend's wedding. And she kind of returns home with her tail between her legs a little bit because she hasn't really made much of herself in New York at the moment. Um, so she kind of has to face her all of her friends and her own past expectations of herself when she comes back to her hometown. Um, but before the wedding even starts, she meets this sort of mysterious stranger. His name is Esteban. And he is preparing to go on a solo road trip through the deep south, exploring like New Orleans and Tennessee and all those places. And she hears this and she needs a little bit of escape herself in her life. So she decides to go with him, skips the wedding, throws all her friends and sort of um, responsibilities behind to have an adventure. That's so messed up. Could be your friend's <laughs> wedding. <laughs> yeah. Why did you decide to have her do that? Skip her friend's wedding. I think that's a really big statement. I think it's a big thing to say when you're at a point in your life and you literally want to escape from your inner turmoil. Mm -hmm. And what I think this film kind of um, reflects is when a character or person decides to take that escapism in a quite literal physical way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they literally want to run away from their problems. Right. And this main character kind of is in that state in her life where nothing is going right for her. She comes back home to Texas and she's expecting to be welcomed back into their friends group, welcome back to the famili familiarity of Austin, but instead she's met with a little bit of, well, so what have you made for yourself? Right. Coming back, and there's all this expectation that she didn't really quite um, expect. Mm -hmm. But more so than ever, I wanted to make this film to show a character taking time for herself to basically figure herself out. In our everyday lives, like we're chained to our phones, to our calendars, to every minute by minute breakdown of what's going on but what I hope to show in this film is there's a chance for people to say I need to take a break for myself to figure myself out yeah I think we can all relate to that especially when we go out and everyone's concerned about well, what do you do and what have you done since last time I saw you a lot of the issues in the film reflect how I feel as a young filmmaker as a female writer director breaking out for the first time so a lot of this film kind of encapsulates all of the pressures I put on myself but also, it's kind of like my, like a story I have to keep reminding myself of too, to take the time to reflect, to appreciate, and also to think about, about how this moment in my life can affect future moments in my career as well. I actually specialize in positive psychology, which is, is amazing. Do you know what awesome. positive psychology is? I can, can sort of, context clues can sort of tell me a little bit about what it is, but that's kind of all I'm, what I'm about, about in my art, in my everyday life. Like, it's all about positivity. It's all about thinking ahead, but also thinking how you can improve upon yourself in the future and letting the past go, too. When you face rejection, because I'm sure you face a lot of rejection being an Asian American female, writer, director, in entertainment, how do you stay motivated to keep moving forward? I think you have to count your blessings. That's how I stay motivated and stay positive in every second. It's amazing that we're here. Look at this beautiful film festival, this beautiful garden. I'm talking to you. I'm here with my film. If if you don't stop to smell the roses and look, you know, wearing roses, <laughs> um, if you don't stop to sort of appreciate where you are and how much you've achieved and how much people, how many people are there to support you too, I think you can get lost in the ugliness of what can happen in this industry. You know, we did crowdfunding for our film Seed and Spark right there. They hosted um, two of our crowdfunding campaigns that we both that were both successful. And just looking at the list of contributors, pretty much like every week, like it makes me feel like I have I have love and I have support from my family, my friends. And if you can't remember that in your day to day, your moment by moment, I think all the other heaviness can sort of come up on you and, and sneak up on you in a very ugly way. Yeah, it almost begins to take more importance than the other stuff. Yeah, and it's always, you know, look at Facebook. People are, yeah. people call it brag book, right? Yeah. You, you post the best moments of your life yeah. on Facebook. And then when you compare, you know, you and PJ's eating cereal to someone in Hawaii having a vacation yeah. on Facebook, there's no way that that can be a one-to-one -one comparison. Well, what's yeah. funny too about that is when you do hear someone complaining or posting something bad, you don't want to hear about it. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's too much 
drama, <laughs> TMI, I don't even want to yeah. do that. Yeah. But I was just I was just talking to another filmmaker here about this, Jennifer Fong, who has an amazing film called Advantageous here. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about ch cho choosing to post on social media in a very vulnerable way. And being vulnerable and being open about those moments that aren't the best moments in your life. And actually finding that the responses to those posts are more positive and have more volume than the ones saying, look at me and my cute up, blah, 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 blah. Right. Because it's a stage. And that for me, I always try to post something positive. But I always try to spread positivity in everything that I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate that. Well, this is this is life, right? We only have one shot at this. Yeah. And you, you can choose to be happy and positive positive in every moment mm -hmm. and I just feel like in our day-to-day -day lives now it's very hard for people to realize what is really important to them. Thank you and where can people see more about the film or more information about you? Sure so if you can go on to our film's website which is T-I-A-N-W-S there is a new world somewhere the acronym okay. um, you can learn more about our cast and our crew you can see our trailer you can see all of our Seed and Spark supporters and look at our campaign if you're trying to crowdfund your own film. Um, and we also have a production blog that is running that basically tells and informs filmmakers about how we're doing things. Because it's never been easier to make a film as this moment right now. And what we want to do is basically give a man, not a manual, but like give all of our experiences out in the open to anyone who wants to perhaps look at them and maybe learn from that for their, for their films as well. That's really nice. I'm glad that you're giving back. Yeah. They've, like, the masses have given us so we're much. It forward. <laughs> we're paying it forward. Yeah. We're definitely paying it forward. So yeah, check out our website and then hopefully by sometime this year we can make the film available for everyone. Yeah, I hope so too. Congratulations Thank and you. good luck. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more inspiring videos, learn about mental health, or join me on the quest to live a more meaningful life. If you like what you see, please like, comment, and share.